this one. We are the people who bring chemistry to life. We are looking for small molecules that are found in all sorts of tissues. We could look at sponges, we could look at shark livers, we could look at higher plants, but what we choose to look at right now are fungi that are found in an extremely unusual environment. A toxic waste dump in beautiful Butte, Montana that was a former copper mine. There's 40 billion gallons of water it's very acidic, 2.5, and very high in metal salts. And in 1995, we found life in that pit. We have them identified based on their ribosomal DNA, so we can figure out the genus and species, but some of them actually aren't identifiable. This guy's kind of a cool guy because uh, we're growing him in uh, 100 parts per million copper and that's why it's sort of a greenish blue color here and it grows just quite fine. The condition seems toxic to us. They certainly are conducive to some kind of life. And now people are looking in deep sea vents for organisms. Uh, they're looking in solid rock 2,000 feet down. They're looking in lava flows. But for us, looking in an environment that's been slowly evolving really since water started infiltrating into this Berkeley pit back in 1982, in some strange way, those conditions are analogous to some of the onset of inflammation and disease in the human body. PW2B is an interesting little fungus that produces some beautiful macrolides that seem to block uh, inflammation very nicely. But I think I'd have to say of all the organisms I've ever isolated from the pit, it would be this guy, BP2OA. It's a slime and it's actually a yeast, one of only two yeasts we have found in the pit. And when this little guy is grown in culture, and this is a, a broth, it produces this wonderful slime. And this slime actually helps trap metals in the pit. So it can actually help remediate its own environment. So we're doing drug discovery, that's our thing. But there are so many different applications that someone could look at. Now, as a woman scientist, it's, it's been an interesting journey. Um, we are not always taken seriously. Encouraging young women to flourish in the sciences has always been something near and dear to my heart. Now, whether or not you ever decide to be a scientist, learning the scientists is important for all of us because we've really developed critical thinking skills as we go through some of the processes involved in learning sciences. So it is my, my wish, my joy to always work with young people, but to particularly encourage young women and any student who has been somehow discouraged from following their dreams of discovery. I fell in love with the natural world. And I think in my whole huge Italian family, I think I'm the only scientist. I was going to swim with dolphins. I fell in love with Don. We moved to Butte, Montana, and there was no marine biology program. And so I started working with him. He already had a PhD in this area. Fell in love again. So you can have new dreams, and that's the exciting thing. So I think a lot of us fall in love with what we want to be when we're five years old. But we should never limit ourselves to the dreams we have as a child. We can always have new dreams.